What phase did you go through that you're embarrassed about now? When I was younger I would ride my bike with a snorkeling mask because it was the closest thing I had to a motorcycle helmet and I wanted to look cool. Oh my god I love this. I think you're really cool. I was a rabid Sonic fan. In 1998. Not exactly the height of its popularity. My fellow nerd friends even kicked me out of their Star Trek LARP group because I kept trying to put Sonic characters in the storyline. Think about that. Just rattling off the whole virgin list. The I listen to Green Day so I'll wear black clothes, black eyeliner and dye my hair black phase. I wasn't a punk. Or a goth. I was just unpopular. That is what drives punks and goths to be punks and goths. Source. Was punk goth because I was unpopular. For about two years in college every day I wore jeans and a t-shirt from the Warner Brothers store. Bugs Bunny. Daffy Duck etc. The amazing thing about this is that I somehow had a girlfriend throughout this period. I'm 33 and that sounds like the way I dress most of the time now outside of work. Only substitute WB with superhero video game shirts from Target and jeans with cargo shorts or gym shorts. A new agi magic phase. I read palms and tarot for money and also did love spells for money. I was making up 90% of it but was also quite successful, so I felt both ashamed and egged on by it making me popular. Oh yeah, back in those days, you'd hear me say that classic line, I'm not religious, but I'm one of the most spiritual people you'll ever meet. Gag me, I joined a freaking coven of Wiccans with my formerly Pentecostal Christian girlfriend at the time. That phase in the 90s where I expressed my love of home improvement by saying I don't think so. Tim all the time was a little embarrassing. But do I really regret it? I don't think so. Tim. Oh no. He's relapsing. My I'm not like other girls girls are too much drama phase. I feel like a lot of girls are taught that other girls are their competition and to feel instantly threatened around other women. But as I've grown up. I've realized it's so much better when you see other women as potential friends rather than someone you have to compete against. It's a lot more fun to compliment other girls and watch them light up instead of insulting them in your head because you're insecure. Yes and it also takes a long time to break that habit. I have to stop and tell myself okay, every woman is not competition. Have more self esteem than that but after years of doing it, still tough. Black pants, black shirt. Black cowboy hat, black cowboy boots, I wasn't goth, I called it my black Johnny Cash phase. You were basically hurt. I pierced my eyebrow in grade 8 with a safety pin, this wasn't the phase, I didn't want my parents to know so I started wearing a tensor bandage from my eyebrows to my hairline like some weird hairband bandana, my parents thought it was some weird phase, kind of like I was taking the Nelly bandaid to the extreme. This went on for 4 months until mom saw me come out of the shower with an infected eyebrow piercing. I've yet to be able to look at a tensor bandage without cringing at my teenage self. I pierced my lip with a safety pin in high school. I just took it out whenever I would go home. I used to use photoshop to get rid of it in pictures I put online. It was a pain in the butt to constantly take in and out. I'm amazed it never got infected. My parents still never know I did that. That old music is so much better than any current mainstream music phase. Ugh. I would have probably been one of those kids that comment on YouTube with I'm only 12 and I love this type of music. Yeah, thank frick I wasn't in the habit of leaving YouTube comments back in the day. I used to shop exclusively at a Aeropostale. The clothes were cheap as crap and decent quality but seeing Aero 87 slash Aeropostale plastered across my chest on basically every photo from 5 years ago makes me cringe. Redneck country girl phase in high school. I dress how you'd think. I hung out with the redneck boys and did redneck things. I was trying to impress a guy. It didn't work. I'm over that now. For a few months I thought it would be cool to be a cold, calculating psychopath and often acted kind of emotionless and looked like I was gonna eye someone soon. Dang you Hannibal Lecter and anime. Dang you. Yeah I did this too. But at the same time I acted super random. Raises spork random. And would do weird crap to try to act weirder than my friends. Emo phase in middle high school. 
Dyed hair black and straightened it every day. Watched Repo. The genetic opera with my girlfriend whose MySpace's last name was Vampire. Hung out at the mall with nothing to do. Stayed up until 6am and slept all day. I didn't even like it to this day I don't know what pulled me into that phase. I really like to read, draw, skate, fish and surf. I was an idiot. Shudders. The I'm a thug phase with my best friend in high school. The crap about that, is if you think you're a thug you'll actually become a thug. And by becoming a thug I mean your best friend will get shot, your girlfriend will break up with you, and you'll get a felony on your record. Stay in school. Just, Jesus freaking Christ. Stay in school. There was a time when I just went into my room and cried every day after school. I'm over it now, but I wonder what the heck was wrong. I was an angsty mall ninja. I also used to walk with one of my arms in my coats like Oren from Final Fantasy X. Pretty much my entire middle school, early high school self. Comma I also used to walk with one of my arms in my coats like Oren from Final Fantasy X. And no woo woo Pretty much my entire party girl s phase that lasted entirely too long. Pretending I didn't care what others thought of me when in actuality, it was the opposite. I was clearly seeking approval and attention from boys and I was probably the only who didn't see right through myself. You. I feel for you and was there, too. I didn't even have daddy issues. Much. Okay reddit. This might sound weird. I went through a I'm white phase. I am mixed. Half black and half white. I spent a good portion of my teenage years repressing any idea that I was black. I would dress like my white friends in the PNW and distanced myself from aspects of black culture, barbershops, media, etc. I felt as through I wasn't black enough to be a part of the black community identity, so I tried to blend in. I would eventually get it from both sides. I would not really be black. You speak white. But then in dating. I would be treated different because the girl or her parents would focus on my skin tone. That last from about 10 years old until I was about 17. Once I got to college, I went through some stuff and just decided to be myself. To any other mixed race people out there, you'll know what I am talking about. Be yourself folks. The hateful I hate girls in makeup and pretty girls stage. Add a little horse and anime girl to the mix. It was a perfect awkward mess of a situation there. I learned to like myself in college and I have been improving myself every single say. Nothing is more nasty in the world than a bitter bee. In high school, animated dress shirts with dragons and such. Not sure what I was thinking. Also not showering for a week. I was a freaking train wreck during my emo phase. It was very clear that I was gay. But I denied my sexuality because it was wrong and became a human train wreck. I wore all black and was heavy on the eyeliner. I looked like a freaking raccoon that was about to shoot up the school. I only listened to real music like MCR and Free On Board. I wasn't a poser and hated preps. I wrote fan fiction, Draco x Harry, Sirius x Lupin, and Jacob x Jasper mostly, with my friends. We would swap the stories and read them. I also became a borderline stalker to a crush I had. We were going to fall in love and get married. Yes he was a dude. And no I was not gay. God I need a time machine to punch my teenage self. I went through a look at how interesting and quirky I am because I know a few Japanese words and anime is so much deeper and more intelligent than your reality shows, and you're all just too dumb to understand its cultural richness phase. Yes, those two were part of the same phase for me. That said, I still like anime, Japanese music, and Japanese culture, but I don't do that anymore. A week before the term existed, you're a trailblazer. I got a barbed wire armband tattoo in the late 90s. Currently in the process of getting it removed. Thought I was cool as crap walking around that summer living at the beach. Now I feel the need to hide it every time I'm wearing a t-shirt. Don't permanently alter your body for a fad. Just don't do it. That is pretty bad. I see people like that once in a while and wonder if they feel like an idiot getting those tattoos. Now I know. I think the same goes for the tribal tattoos. I sometimes wonder what the current tattoo fad is going to be in 10 years. I think maybe the floral design thing since I have been seeing a lot of that lately. Goth and depressed. In reality I was very depressed. 
I needed therapy and medication that I didn't get until recently. I expressed this by dyeing my clothes black, ripping up my jeans and good clothes, cutting powdering my face white, stopped going to church, skipping class, got violent and quiet and I lived 3 years in headphones listening to death metal bands. Someone mouthed off to me, I blew up on them, I sent my bullies running because they thought I was going to shoot up the school. Besides that, I was the perfect student, I didn't say a word in class, made all A's and was a teacher's pet. Everyone else avoided me because they knew me as that weird chick that cut herself in the bathroom I didn't actually. It was a rumor that circulated until the counselor put a stop to it and called my parents. I'm embarrassed about destroying my clothes and my body and making that my image but I will always be proud of myself for fighting back. Likely to get buried but when I was younger I would read Nintendo game instruction manuals in my front yard out loud. Just to see if any other passerby kids would be interested in video games like me. This makes me sad. After graduating high school, I planned to take a year off to save up enough money for a car. Instead, I spent a whole year blowing all of my paychecks and having too much fun. I regret it so freaking much. Grass is always greener. Could've regretted not taking time to just enjoy your youth. My Homestuck roleplay phase. I will never not love Homestuck. But I made an RP account on Facebook and had people I roll at me. Seriously if I ever have to remember this again. You have legal reason to end my life. My I'm not embarrassed by my scene phase. I had fun with it. I am embarrassed that I wore cat ears from a Halloween costume everywhere during it though. So. Much. Cringe. That and the hair dye without knowing what I was doing. Brown green purple bleached hair is not a good look. The S shaming phase. Really hope this one gets stamped out entirely. Basically me just hating on girls who dressed in a way I wished I had the confidence to got with guys. While I pretended that being an antisocial loser and spending my time reading somehow made me better and gave me the right to judge them. I was super obsessed with a certain pop punk band in the late 90s, early 2000s. I knew every little detail about their lives. I went on a cross country trip to their hometown. I saw them live 10 plus times and spent the majority of my time on internet message boards talking about them. The some real internet crazies tried to frame me for some seriously crazy stalker crap they'd done in real life. From that point on I just pretty much listened to music without ever learning much more than the names of the band group and it really solidified my belief that being famous must have its serious downsides and is not for me. Some real internet crazies tried to frame me for some seriously crazy stalker crap they'd done in real life. Tell more about crazy stuff please. From middle school until like junior year of high school, I wore all overly sized clothes. The same overly sized hoodie and B had my hair not in a ponytail. I was uncomfortable with my body, had bad self esteem, was way too shy for my own good, and just did not want any attention at all. I'm way happier now. I have cute clothes that I like and I'm even trying dresses and skirts now and I still haven't tried to tackle makeup, because I'm a slob who touches her face way too much to waste expensive makeup on it lol. But I'm much happier with myself than I was just 5 years ago. If you want to give it a go with some cheaper makeup, drugstores actually have some really good stuff for not a ton of money. $16 foundation, a couple $6 eyeshadows, $2 eyeliner. $10 mascara, $8 lip color, and you have a full face for about 50-ish bucks. The Malibu's most wanted look. I had the Adidas baby blue velvet jumpsuit with the brim hat. Forget what they were called. Complete with spiked hair and slang words. I was 15 at the time. Early 2000s I think. The best part? I was a chubby ginger kid with a lisp. Yeah. Fun times. I was a brinny for a few years. Bought shirts and merchandise and everything. The show and community just seemed like an easy way to connect with people about something. And I later applied the same principle to other areas of my life. There wasn't a single event that made me stop watching the show. I just gradually lost interest. Interestingly the first week I forgot about the show and didn't watch the new episode was the week I lost my virginity. So things worked out. But looking back I really wish I hadn't even looked down that road. My mother freaking emo phase in middle school. Wore the same crap every day. A baggy red shirt with baggy jeans. I had like 299 of them. 
Sorry to break the news bud, but you were a gigalo. The phase where I thought that treating people indecently was cool to try and get others to like me. Because I was young and stupid that escalated into me committing a crime that now has shaped me into the person I am now for better or for worse. Embarrassed is one of the ways I feel about because if people ask about those earlier years I don't have any way of easily just talking to them about it without them thinking I'm just scum. Thank god I've changed. My indie hipster phase. I think I watched High Fidelity 1 too many times or something. Being snobby doesn't mean you have good taste, it just makes you an butthole. I had the stereotypical edgy emo phase. Wore dark clothes, mostly because that was all I had anyway. Linkin Park, the works. I actually had forgotten all about it until I was helping my mother get her house ready for sale. I found several boxes of my school projects, and one from 7th grade was an autobiography I had to write for English class. A chapter for each year of my life or something. The title for the current chapter, age 13, was titled Edge of the Knife, had a quote from a Linkin Park song. I want to say it was from a place for my head, and a picture of a knife. I stared at it for a few minutes and then went Christ. I didn't realize I was that bad back then. Either, the phase where I hated being at home but had no friends money so I went on a lot of dates. I was also too afraid to say no when men made a move and slept with men I didn't want to sleep with. Or last summer when a relationship ended, I went off the rails and am deeply ashamed of my neediness, desperation, and extremely low self esteem. If I recall correctly, I went through the butthole political phase at least twice. I went from frick the right to frick the left, and now I'm in the I don't really favor either party phase. Calling myself a lesbian. Not because being a lesbian is shameful at all. I'm just not. I'm bisexual. I was in a two year relationship with another girl when I was a teenager, and she was uncomfortable with me calling myself bisexual because she was worried it would make guys hit on me. I go through phases where I'm more or less attracted to different genders and at the time I was more attracted to women, so I just caved and called myself a lesbian because I figured maybe I was. Maybe I just thought I was attracted to men because I was supposed to be. It took me a long time to realize that in reality it was almost gaslighting. I'd never been a lesbian and it was ridiculous for me to call myself one just because my girlfriend wanted me to. I've been in fulfilling relationships with all sorts of people since then, and I'm actually still friends with that ex. But I still feel this slight twinge of embarrassment every time I think about it. In 8th grade I thought I was a musical prodigy and affected a high pitched, obnoxious giggle like Mozart's character from Amadeus. I did this every time I laughed. This lasted for about a year. I went through what I called a goth phase, though my mom denies it because I didn't act like a goth. I wore exclusively black from the 8th grade until sophomore year of high school. I only listened to Marilyn Manson, and shopped exclusively at Hot Topic. My hair is naturally pretty dark and my skin is naturally very pale, so it worked pretty well for me. I just had to wear thick, dark eyeliner and I was good. I think I still have a pair of trip pants somewhere, chains and all. My mother claims that goth people act a certain way, and I was way too perky and chipper to be a goth. I'm not really sure what that means, but looking back now, she has a point. Even as an infant, I was very smiley and bubbly. As far as stereotypes go, you could say I didn't quite fit. Perky goth is definitely a trope. An idiotic misunderstanding of basic physics led me, then age 15 or so, to passionately argue that things like magic and ghosts were completely within the realm of realistic possibility. Our understanding of the world has drastically changed over the years I'd argue. What about dark matter and dark energy? Who's to say there isn't even more that we can't detect yet? There's no evidence against the existence of ghosts or magic. Fortunately, I eventually realized that I didn't have a clue what I was saying. And to be honest, it was a pretty liberating experience. As I started actually studying physics, I came to see how the tapestry of the universe is woven in such a way that while ghosts and magic can't exist, seriously, electromagnetism, and by extension, your computer, wouldn't work if they could. There are so, so many more interesting, and real things out there. The saddening part is that I still see people offering the same arguments that I did when I was a teenager. TL. DR. 
Magic isn't real, but I sure as heck convinced myself that it was. In high school shortly after Columbine me and a friend who were the school's known smartasses and goofs wore matching black trench coats to school. It literally had everyone even the faculty talking until we were forced to not wear them to school anymore. As in the principal threatened to take them from us if we wore them again to school. He called them a distraction. The irony is, the attention it got us and him giving us crap about us just made us gloat and snicker about it even harder. Years later I run into people we went to school with who are like remember when you and wore those black trench coats to school. You guys were hilarious. Yeah, because we didn't give a frick. Looking back on that whole situation now, I am definitely a little embarrassed when it gets brought up. My wife was like you did what when she first heard about it. We weren't weird, angsty kids back then. We just watched too much Tom Green and thought it would be an amusing way to make people uncomfortable. White eyeliner with blue eyeshadow. No mascara. I thought 7th grade me looked great. My dad told me I looked like a H. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.